Kirby, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about hair curling. I'm going to tell you how I curl my hair. I'm a one trick pony really. I only like do curls for my videos and I oftentimes get compliments on how my hair looks and I've gotten a couple requests a couple like two or three for a video on how to curl hair and just like the very very basics of how I curl my hair so I thought I would dive into that today if you are interested to see how I curl my hair and maybe pick up a few tips and tricks then please keep watching okay guys so I'm going to show you how I curl my hair today and hopefully you can pick up some tips for yourself I know some people think that this is like the most challenging beauty task out there but I promise you curling your hair might seem intimidating but it's really not practice makes perfect with everything in beauty just again putting that out there too so what you're gonna need is a curling iron this one is by hot shot tools or hot tools I actually got this at what was it TJ Maxx or Marshall's it was on sale I think I got it for like 15 or 20 dollars uh, the hot tools normally at like Sally's and places like that can be kind of expensive but Marshall's and TJ Maxx oftentimes have these hot tools which are like wonderful professional grade uh, curling irons for like 20 bucks or less. I think this is a one inch. If you would like a tighter curl, get a smaller barrel size. If you would like a bigger billowy curl, then get a larger barrel size. I personally think that the one inch is a very good place to start, but I know that a lot of people like bigger curls, so you could do like a one and a half, or if you like a smaller curl, you could do like a half inch, but that's like really tight. You're going to need some clips. I like these butterfly clips. You can find them at the Dollar Tree. You can also find them at Sally's. I'll link everything down in the description box below so you can check it out on your own time. You're also going to need some hairspray. I like the Dove Style and Care Micro Mist. Tresemme also makes a Micro Mist. Any of the Micro Mist hairsprays are really good or aerosol uh, sprays are really good. Some of the like pump bottle liquid hairsprays um, are just a little too moist and they're a little too um, heavy for the hair when curling. That's just in my personal experience, but I've liked the Dove Micro Mist hairspray. This is an extra hold too. I always get like the highest hold that you can get. The highest of the high, the holdest of the hold, level five. And then also if you have very um, oily hair or you have very like moist hair or and I say moist like hydrated hair if you have very hydrated hair very hydrated healthy very oily hair if your hair has a hard time holding a curl you're also going to want to pick up some dry shampoo the dry shampoo is going to if you have oily hair it's going to absorb some of the oil some of the moisture out of your hair it's also going to give your hair some texture so it can actually hold on to the curl and grip the curl now we're ready. I have, this is freshly washed hair, freshly washed and blow dried hair. I personally feel like freshly washed hair curls the best. So whether it's dirty, whether it's freshly cleaned, whatever hair you have, just make sure it is dry, bone dry. Like it needs to be dry dry. Uh, what I like to do or how I like to curl my own hair is that I like to curl it into two different sections. So I just take a follow my part all the way to the back of my head and then I'll clip up the one side so it does not get in the way and then I work on one half of my head at a time just because I think that that's easier. I personally have very dry damaged hair so I do not actually use any dry shampoo. If you have oily, hydrated, wonderfully healthy hair that has a hard time holding a curl, this is when you're going to want to take your dry shampoo and you're going to, whoops, for the sake of the video, this is, you're going to want to go in section by section, take your dry shampoo and really blast the root of the hair. You can blast the 
uh, shaft or the ends of the hair too, but those will get some hairspray when you're actually curling your hair. If you're using a dry shampoo like this Suave Professionals Between Washes Volume and Fullness, you're going to let it sit for a minute or two and then you're going to rub it out. Really good in there. If you're having a hard time finding a dry shampoo that works while you're curling your hair, finding one that adds uh, volume is always good. It kind of gives a little lift. Um, it'll naturally kind of give you the bounce that you're looking for with curls. So I have very dry damaged hair so I actually do not hairspray every single section. If you have healthier hair than mine or you have hair that has a harder time holding a curl, what you're going to do is... Now I know what you probably think is that you're going to spray the hairspray and then curl it and you can do that however you might fry the hair depending on the hairspray that you actually have because hairspray has a high water content so you're actually taking dry hair dousing it with a moisture bait or like a water based product and then applying heat to it what you can do as an alternative and sometimes holds the curl a little bit better is you can curl the hair first you can curl it and then take your hairspray and just lightly mist it over with the hairspray. Now in terms of temperature or the settings that you are going to be using on your curling iron, if you have thinner, finer hair, you should use a lower heat. I personally, and I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that just crank it up like all the way. I generally keep it between the 380 and the 450, so I do keep it a little bit on the higher side, and that is just because my hair is a little bit more damaged and I have a I just feel like the heat has a harder time penetrating. Again, hairdressers and hairstylists out there are going to come at me because I know that that is not the right science. But if you have finer, thinner hair, you do not need to crank this up the heat all the way. You can keep it on a lower setting. I would say start at a lower temperature and then work your way up if you feel like your hair needs slightly more heat to set. Does that make sense? Also, when you are letting your hair kind of like get the heat, you're going to just take your fingertips and gently feel the outside of the hair that is on the barrel of the curling iron. And when you feel that the outside of the hair is getting hot or warm to the touch, then you know that it is ready to release and be set. So now that we have talked about products, heat, sectioning, we're going to talk about the actual positions that you can hold your curling iron at. Now, how I usually hold my curling iron is I work from the back of my head to the front. And how I generally curl my own hair on a daily basis is I have my curling iron at a vertical angle. I do not hold it horizontal. I hold it at a vertical angle because this is going to give me a little bit more of like a softer, natural, uh, wavy, curly look rather than a, a full on like curler set traditional curl look. I'm also looking at every day. This is not going to provide a lot of volume because I am not looking for a lot of volume. If you see at the root, it kind of lays flatter to my head. I'm not looking for tons of volume to these curls because I'm just wearing them as an everyday style to kind of finish the ends of my hair. So I hold my curling iron up and down. You can also do it this way. However, I do find that that is a little bit more difficult when you're curling it on yourself. Like, so I just hold it vertical. The other trick too that is a little hard is that getting the right curls front and back. 
So I curled this one towards my face, so now we are going to curl away from my face. And you want to do this with like every other curl going forward and backwards because this is going to give you that little bit more dimension, a little bit more fullness, and all of your curls aren't going to clump together into like two or three little ringlets. Why people find when they put their hair up into a ponytail or put their hair into pig uh, pigtails into any type of style when they curl their hair and then they get like two sausage curls is because the curl pattern that they're doing all faces the same way so some people will do all backwards some people will do all forwards but if you notice on these two curls this one goes back and this one points forward. So then whenever I brush them out, they're going to twist different and then they're never going to like link up to create one massive sausage link curl. That's not to say that you can't do two curls in the same direction. You can, it's just switch it up every once in a while so that you're not creating like these big lumps of curls in the same direction. You have to go back and forward and back and forward. Also, be mindful that you're going to want to at like the top of the head, like the crown of the head, you're going to want to make most of those curls back. You're not going to want to bring too many of those forward just because then you're going to create a bunch of different like, you know, cowlicks. And we do oftentimes want more volume at the top of our head, the crown of our head, than not. Also, the bigger the section, the larger the curl. So if you'd like smaller curls, then make sure you're taking smaller sections. I like to kind of change it up. Not all of my sections are the same. Sometimes I take really, really big sections. Other times I take really, really small sections. Again, I think that just adds a little bit more dimension to the look itself. And if you notice, I'm not spraying every single piece with hairspray uh, because that's not generally how I like to style my hair because again my hair holds curl very very well probably because it's very dry and damaged and so I don't feel the need to spray every section afterwards again you might not have to. If your hair has a hard time holding curls, then yes, spray every section. But if your hair has a really decent time uh, holding a curl on its own, then wait until the very end of the half of your head to spray it with hairspray. Then you're not wasting product and then you're also not having to um, have all of that build up on your hair either. So now that we're done with the whole section, take your hairspray, just lightly go over it, the whole section with hairspray, and then you're going to start on your other section, which is done the exact same way as this side, so I'm going to do that off camera and we'll be back to brush everything out. Okay, now that both sides of your hair are done, you're going to brush it out. You can let it sit for a second so that the uh, heat kind of cools down and your curls have a chance to set. Uh, letting them set a little bit before you brush them out keeps them a little bit tighter, a little bit longer. If you brush them out while they're still hot, then your curls are not going to last as long or they're not going to be as tight. I kind of just like to take my fingers at first and just kind of like jostle them around jostle them around I don't know what that means brush them out with my fingers I guess you could say I think that brushing them out with your fingers gives them a little bit of like a messier lived in look it kind of keeps them a little bit curlier a little bit more like billowy I don't know I just like how it looks a little bit better with like brushing it out with my fingers. Um, you can also use a large tooth comb. Don't use small, use a large tooth comb and just kind of break them up a little bit. And then once you get it parted and styled the way that you want with your fingers or your comb, you can go back in with your hairspray, spray everything and set it. 
I personally prefer using like a spray wax or a spray glue. Um, I just think that it gives me a little bit more of like a dirty PC look. The one that I really like is this Indie Hair Spray Glue Dirty Finish. This one I got at Marshalls on clearance for $3. But I also like this one from Redken. It's the Wax Blast 10 High Impact Finishing Spray Wax. And it works very similarly to Hairspray, but this one says, Use apply to dry hair and style into a hot mess. Apply after styling to finish and create long lasting hold. So I usually just kind of, even with hairspray, I'll just lift my hair up a little bit, take whatever spray I'm using, hairspray, spray wax, and just gently spray it. This also smells incredible. And then especially if I'm using the wax and I want a little bit of like a dirtier, messier look, I can go and just kind of like rough up my curls a little bit. Then my hair is finished. My hair is styled. I usually keep this style for like two or three days. So I'll wear it all of today, tomorrow, and then the day after tomorrow, I might wash my hair or I might just dry shampoo the crap out of it. So this style um, on my nice, fine, dry, color treated hair lasts me about two-ish, three-ish days. I don't wash my hair every day, so I'll just throw a shower cap on with like a band to not get any of my hair actually wet. I'll dry shampoo it, use a couple different like texturizing sprays on it throughout the next couple days to kind of keep it like nice and finished looking. Um, but yeah, that's how I curl my hair. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks. I hope a couple of the things that I mentioned help you. If they did, let me know down in the comment section below. If you have any of your own tips and tricks, uh, let me know down in the comment section below. Couple last minute things. I personally like curling irons that have spring loaded, uh, what is this, arms, spring loaded clamps. I do not like curling wands and I do not like uh, manual uh, curling wand or curling irons. I personally like the spring loaded curling iron, especially if you're curling your own hair. It just makes everything so much easier. Also, your hair should not be steaming, smoking, smelling burnt in any way. If that is the case, please turn the heat on your curling iron down, down. All right. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up. As always, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. I would hate for you to miss out on any more reviews or tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, guys.